Welcome to BFM Uncensored. Professor Ramadan, you're considered among the leading Islamic thinkers of our time. Um, and in Malaysia, there's much talk right now about the implementation of hooded law and the setting up of a full Islamic state. I'd like to know um, your opinion. Could this work in a multi-racial, multi multi-ethnic society like Malaysia? Look, the first, even if a non-pluralistic uh, uh, society, a multi-ethnic society as you have in Malaysia, I think that the Muslims should really come back to the very essence of Islam and the very essence of Sharia. Sharia is not to start with structure and punishment. The first attitude that we have to have, even with a Muslim majority country where we have, you know, 90% of Muslims, the first thing to do is justice. And after justice is well-being of the people and not punishment. So in Malaysia, I don't think that this is the way forward to start by thinking about the structure and Islamic State and, and uh, we are going to start with implementing, you know, Hudud. I think that this is a way where some Muslims are on the defensive, so they want they are protective and they, they want to start with you know symbolic acts to show how Muslim we are. And I would suggest that the best thing that we have to do in Malaysia is to work on a policy that is uh, encompassing, comprehensive, taking all the people together and work for social justice, well-being of the people within the society. And uh, equality, equality is very important between the people. As Muslims, we are for equal citizenship. And by saying this, we are not undermining our Islam. Because we are Muslims, we are not scared of saying to all the people, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to the Jews at his time, you have the same rights and the same duties as us. That's uh, quite conflicting for Malaysians to hear because um, we've been brought up or we've our background is that um, the, the indigenous folk, the Bumi Putras, are considered to have a slightly higher um, status in, in the society, and not all not all are equal in the eyes of society. Let's just say. As, as human beings, you know, we need to understand, and this is something that was said by the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he was talking about the black people and the slaves, saying they have the same rights, the best among you is the more God conscious. So, Akramakum and Allah at This is said in the Quran, the best, who had the best dignity. So sometimes our culture are coming with understanding that we might respect as long as, in the name of the culture, we are not promoting something which is against uh, the human dignity. So if we have a culture, it's good, we respect the past, we respect the tradition. But to use this, to justify the fact that some people have more rights than others, that you can mistreat a poor or mistreat someone because he's not coming from the right, you know, tribe, that's not Islamic. And if we want to do something good in the light of the Islamic teachings, is not to start by punishing the poor, but to start by uh, celebrating the equal dignity of all. So an Islamic state essentially is a state where everyone is equal in the eyes of the law and God. Yes, it's, it's about uh, equality of all the people, it's about uh, justice, it's about dignity, it's about uh, caring for people. And then for me, even the qualification of an Islamic state is a state that is based on ethical ground, it's ethical principles. And Islam is telling us about this, so, so it's really very much a welcoming nation where the people of other faiths can find a place and they are not discriminated. La ikraha fiddin, there is no compulsion in religious matters. This is what is said in the Quran. And I would suggest that the people who are on the defensive are always trying to reduce Islam to something which is punishment, prohibition, fear. Should, should, fear, exactly. This is this is a very narrow way of understanding the universality of our message. Is there, Professor, in your opinion, a successful uh, model of the Islamic State? Would you say um, Turkey? Would you say Saudi Arabia? No, I, I wouldn't. I, I think that there is no uh, successful model. We have some countries that are trying to move towards something which is politics uh, inspired by ethics. Turkey is moving towards something which is successful, economically speaking, but still has to improve when it comes to minority rights, freedom of expression. So there is no perfect model, but we only have principles. And the best is, and if you, you see how the poor people are treated in petrol monarchies, you understand that this is not 
uh, a possible model for us. You know, the first thing that you can see in uh, a Muslim majority society should be to care about the poor and to protect their dignity, which is not the case in many of our countries these days. Uh, what about certain uh, fundamental principles that go against the principles of Islam? For instance, there's been the growing acceptance of homosexuality in the West and in the media as well. Um, how does that, uh, is, is it possible for Muslims to remain faithful and tolerant um, and accept um, gays? Uh, what about Muslim gays? How, how do you deal with that kind of contradiction? That, that, that's a good question and I think that we have to be quite strict on the principles why we are open with people. Strict to the principle is to say Islam as Christianity, Judaism and even Buddhism, uh, the Dalai Lama was very strong with this, is not accepting homosexuality. This is condemned by Islam. Mm -hmm. It's not Islamic. Now, how do we deal with people? We can say to the people, I respect who you are, but I don't accept what you are doing. I don't agree with what you are doing. Could, can that be reconciled? Can you respect someone but not agree with of what course, they're doing? Many people can respect me without agreeing by the fact that I am fasting, for example. Of course you have to. You don't accept or don't agree with what I'm doing, but you respect my being. My being is sacred in itself. So this is the way Muslims should be clear on this. We respect the humanity of human beings because this is said by the Quran, Adam, we gave dignity to human beings. But we don't accept your behavior. We are not agreeing with this. Now having said this, we are clear on the principles, open to the people. Now I have people who are Muslims who come to me and some are suffering because they feel that you know they are driven by homo their homosexuality. Others are trying to be isolated from or to remain isolated from the community. We need to have a dialogue, not to condemn, because the societies within which we live now are normalizing so many things that you cannot just mm -hmm. come and condemn. You should understand the sources of some behavior, and sometimes listening, helping, uh, going along, and helping the people to feel that uh, you might not agree with what they are doing. You still are here to listen, to care, and to help. Right. Thank you. I've been speaking to Professor Tariq Ramadan, author of The Arab Awakening. Thanks for being on BFM Thank and you so much.